with a holiday reminder that war is over if you want it. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice for the gun. A mandate. You get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We'd love that about you, right, Gina Grant? That's right. And Bald Brian. Jane Fonda hates her dad. And uh, speaking of the Boston's music you just heard, Dickie Barrett is going to join us up on stage when we go live in uh, Tempe. Yeah. Coming up this weekend. So come on out and say hi to Tempe Improv. All right, uh, much to get into. We got the trials and the tribulations of volleyball. No boy. Plus uh, thoughts. Um, So I will tell you that it was a shortish day of volleyball. Six hours. Well, it meant leaving. You know, I'm a kind of a door to door guy. I've always kind of felt that i felt uh, that I'm way i disqualified in the first match <laughs> wow. sorry no more guys the rest of the day you got to take those bomb threats seriously <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep everyone safe um i uh i'm a door-to-door guy i've always kind of been uh i did that with loveline i did a calculation on loveline all those years ago brian will testify to the fact that i would walk in Sometimes when the theme song was playing. It's impressive. I always knew I was running late or cutting it close when Drew was sitting in my seat. Because my seat was the one that had the phone bank in front of it. Your average arrival time was minus one second till the show started. Yeah. I mean, if, if you really brought it when down. When the show starts, I, when the music starts, your yeah, average is minus one second. Yeah, I was, I was walking in. And my calculation was I could leave my house at 930 and get there just before the show started at 10. And then door to door, it was a three hour night of work versus more now other people choose to get there earlier but my feeling was is i work 10 hours a week on this show uh and then you factor in the drive Mm -hmm. and that's another five hours a week i I work on this show so that's 15 hours a week but if i showed up a half hour early or 25 minutes early to each show it's equivalent to doing one more Mm -hmm. show time-wise now, I was lucky enough to have a job where sitting and talking or driving my car were the same. I, I get sometimes when you're doing hard labor and stuff, that's that's different. But this this wasn't it. And I would always say, if you're the kind of person that gets to the airport an hour before you need to be at the airport, not an hour before the flight, mm-hmm. but an hour before you need to be mm-hmm. there, then once you do that five times, it's like a cross-country flight. Yeah. All right. So um, door-to-door... I wrote it down was uh, six ten in the morning Saturday mm. to four ten, which is ten hours. Um, so it was a ten hour odyssey. Okay. Yep. Yeah, but, trip, yeah. but there have been days when a few more games were played. Uh, I totaled up the number of serves I watched. Okay, because each you po- were engaged. Each point begins with the serve. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, So I took all the games, I Uh counted the scores, and then I did the serving math. 269 serves. So 269 times I saw somebody's daughter jump up and hit a volleyball. Um, The actual time at the facility was probably closer to seven hours and and change. Sure. Um, That's still a lot of of youth sports (laughs) there. By the way, I... When I was growing up playing sports, I if they got to the four if they got to the two hour mark, they would have burnt the place down. The parents would have. Yeah, everything just call it. Everything was made to be between about about an hour and fifteen minutes and an hour and a half. Yeah. That was about the max. Like with the little league with seven year olds, it's six innings or an hour and a half or whichever comes first. I was about right. to say there is a silver lining here, which is I assume Based on the fact that she's playing two counties away, this is club volleyball, not school volleyball. Yes. At, at 16 years old, you're not watching six-year-olds chase a soccer ball around in oh, a cluster. God. You're actually watching no, they're good. high-ish level, you yeah. know, I got I, I took a I took a film of it. Um, maybe Chris will find it. But uh, they're doing strategy. They're, mm-hmm. Natalia's uh, 
whacking that ball over the net. I saw her spike one, and I was just like, this has scholarship written all I over it. I was just about to say, this has not come up, but at 16 years old, I, I read either on your Instagram or Lynette's that she's the team captain. From what I saw, seems to be very capable yeah. and tall, physically capable. I mean, are we looking at, like, you know, potential, like, scholarship situation here? I, I don't. I, I asked her about that. She said she's not really interested, because oh. it, would, it would save me money, was the <laughs> subtext. <laughs> Of but that Dad, we can pay to go to Pepperdine. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, to expensive school. Yeah, that that's was the one. That was fun. I'll show you. Eight, and she'd want to live eight, on campus. Eight seconds of uh, her spiking the ball. I love all the talk. It's yeah. a little noisy. Okay. No, oh, she. Yeah. And they always one of the big hugs. A lot of hugs, a lot of a lot of high fives. And they, you know, what they'd all be good at. Not that this is the, their career path. They'd all be good in a restaurant kitchen. Behind you, hot coming through. Yes, on your left. Yeah. Now then, and I got much more to get into. But now, so here's you cannot plan life because, uh, as I've told you, football and Pop Warner football, which I played seven seasons of contact football. Uh, that saved my life, mm -hmm. and uh, I dreamt one day of having a son, and then we'd instill those virtues into him through this contact sport. <laughs> <laughs> Plays no sports. Not interested. But I have a daughter. A lot of yeah. you like sports. You got Love one. sports. Who cares? Plays no sports. Had uh, I'm jumping around because it's interesting. He was explaining nobody plays Pop Warner football at his school. The uh, Rich Whitey is done with the concussions. Okay. They, yeah, they don't. Well, they don't do that parents anymore. Won't allow it. I have theorized into this microphone on the show many times that football will eventually transition to a regional sport for the reason you mentioned. Yeah. Rich white folks in in parts of California are not going to let their no. kids play football. So football is going to become lacrosse. In a, yeah, yeah, in a sense. Wow. Nobody, uh, nobody in his class plays. But he did say something that was interesting that verified a point of mine, which is he was like, um, he said, uh, nobody, nobody plays Pop Warner football. Nobody plays hockey. Except for this one kid, Kenny. Oh. And this kid is good. Mm -hmm. And I said, he plays hockey? Oh, yeah. Kenny plays oh, hockey. He plays hockey. He doesn't play on the, the team. There's no school right. team or anything. He plays club ball or mm. club hockey or whatever. And he, he goes back to Minnesota and he plays hockey. There it is. And I was like, is this, how do you know this guy's good? He's like, because he's got all the equipment he's and everything. Back. He's the only, <laughs> the only guy who plays hockey. This guy's a great hockey player. I said, you know, I floated this theory for many, many, many years. The, the late, great. Uh, Jeff Katz, a dear friend, departed about a year, a couple of years ago. I said, when I was in high school, there was no team, uh, no hockey team. But Jeff Katz played hockey, and he'd show up with the big duffel, the sticks coming out of it. It's got the skates. Overflowing. And he'd regale man. us with stories about, oh, I was in Conejo this weekend playing in a tournament, a hat trick, you know, this, that, and the other. And I was like, and everyone just went, if you said to anyone at North Island, hi, who's the best hockey player? To Jeff Cat. Yeah, no, that different guy. guy's a great hockey Talk player. About it all day. And my son is going to be Kenny, great hockey player. And I was like, have you ever seen him play hockey? And he's like, nope. Don't but need he's to. got all the, you know, and I was like, this is exactly, this is what I had planned for you, Sonny. Because you, you will... Because he was telling me about guys on the football team, and it's like, ah, oh, that guy's a sauce, and he's just fat, and he's no good. And they say, you know immediately when they play on the team, the school the team, you know exactly who the bench warmers yeah. are and who the Cracker Jacks are. You've seen it. But I used to say, I'm going to tell my son, give him that ho hockey bag, put a stick there. Not even a full stick, just the just end. The yeah, just, just yeah, the tip of the stick. Yeah. Fill, the it with, fill it with newspaper. Yeah. You know, and just have him drag that thing around <laughs> all the Talk great. about tournaments. Talk about hat yeah, tricks or whatever. Yeah, the lingo. Yeah. It was funny. You got high sticks the other day. Not Brutal. here to uh, <laughs> besmirch the, the dead, but uh, at one point, I went to watch Jeff Katz play. I'd been hearing, been regaled with the legend of Jeff Katz in hockey, and at some point made the drive a long ways away to watch him play a game. I don't think he scored a goal, oh. and he just sort of went, yeah, not one of my better ones. <laughs> when we got off the ice, and I'm like, is that true, or is this... 
you were the standout on your team, but that's according to you and us in yeah. this captive audience, and no one could ever verify it. But I thought it was funny that he was explaining all these years later there was one guy named Kenny, and he was a, a he was a legend. <laughs> It was a, a legend of, of the ice, but no one could verify no one could, no it. We knows. just had to take That's his great. word for it. So I got up uh, Saturday morning at about 5.30. It's been cold out here, let oh, me yeah. tell you, people. It's cold now. It's cold now. Uh, I checked the temp before I got in the pool at 5.45. 41 Ew. degrees outside. Yeah. You did? Oh yeah, foothills, baby. It was probably a little little frost on the ice. It was. It was. Well, we'll see if Kenny wants to skate That's my right. pool. <laughs> Forty-one degrees, and uh, it was dark. It did that pool dunk, but God damn it, was I awake after that? There is no. There is nothing that you just said that would make anyone do it. It was dark. Yeah. It was early. It was real. It was. It was colder than usual. It's like you know what? I'm gonna skip this day. I gotta tell you, is as painful as it sounds, you go from that thawing process of getting up two hours earlier than you wanted to, mm -hmm. where you're sort of half asleep with a mm -hmm. cup of coffee between your legs. That I can I can nurse that process from about five thirty a.m. to about nine a.m. Yeah. You're instantaneously awake. At that at that point, as painful as it is, you are one hundred percent there. Are at you that one moment. of these a holes that says, you know, I don't even need coffee now? No, okay. I still got my coffee, Good. but I was Ice coffee instantly right. awake. Um, so the other thing that I found interesting as I was driving Natalia in, and she was explaining that she was working on some school report and a mock trial and this, that, and the other. And uh, she was talking about other classmates and stuff and brought up this uh, one girl that she's uh, labeled as a little bit off. Oh. And she said, yeah, you got to you got to call her by the right pronouns. And if you screw up the pronouns, then they'll she'll correct everybody mm -hmm. and everything. And I thought to myself, whoever was in charge to me, the pronouns are a couple of years old. They're relatively new. Whoever was the engine behind pronouns this person i would love to hire this person okay. I, this is the most effective person on the planet you floated a cockamamie insane theory about they and them mm -hmm. you want plural when we're singular now you could say well yeah but my daughter transitioned into my son okay then it's still he and him then that's yeah, what you it. would go Name, name's not Becky, it's Bart now, and it's not she, it's him. Um, they Easy floated, a, not to mention the Zs and the Zers. Fayers and the Zers and the X, Y, R, S's. Mm -hmm. and the, the, the total cockamamie insanity that has completely disrupted everything when you're trying to communicate with someone. They got it down to the junior high and grade school level. They got it onto the biggest stages. They got the president and the vice president to announce themselves and then announce, you know, the head of transportation. They're all announcing the press. You took the most fucked up, insane, retarded, adolescent joke of an idea and made it the rule of yeah. the land in 10 minutes. And we all have to follow it. They That's that is a super, I mean, effective, impressive. I hope the person is killed in an avalanche. Don't get me wrong. But how fucking effective, if you just look at pronouns as like a product, mm -hmm. like it's a oh, yeah. soda that nobody's ever heard of three years ago, now you must use it or you'll be removed from Twitter. Yeah. Like, <laughs> whoa. This, the, the, they have more of a cultural footprint than any advertising campaign could possibly in the same amount of time. Yes. Pretty yeah. fucking powerful. It's and not it's, uncommon, sorry to interrupt, yeah. to see corporate emails, you know, with just, from anyone, yes. but just, you know, at the bottom, you know, pronouns, yes. this and that. Very common. You got it from, you got it from corporate world to Madison <laughs> Avenue to every school in the land to the highest politicians in the yeah. land. They've all done it. And it's interesting because you gave such a great example of saying, well, my daughter's transitioned and now he's a son. Ooh. And you're like, oh, got it. No problem. That's not, that's a non-issue. It's the, it's the add-ons now that are insufferable. You know how mm -hmm. we know we've reached full saturation with pronouns? Uh, like all of the, um, 
Or like Elon Musk tweeted, or oh, oh, my pronouns are in, like indict oh, Fauci or yeah, investigate or whatever. Imprison Fauci. Yeah, and then, then Ted Cruz was like joking about like my pronouns are kiss my ass or yeah. whatever it was. When you get to the parody part and the joke lands instantly, you've you've reached full saturation. Yeah. You couldn't make those jokes without it being fully. Yeah, in nobody our, would yeah. know what they were talking about. And the thing about the pronouns versus the soda. If you made a really superior product in the soda, then I could taste the soda and go, wow, that's better than Coke. Mm -hmm. But pronouns, I'm still like, I don't know what the fuck all you idiots are talking about. Like most of America is sort of confused and you're still able to push it across the finish line. But as suspected, most of the people do it so they can correct the poor people mm -hmm. who are in their class ago uh, ask ask him if he's uh, bah, bah, hold on slow down yeah. let me correct it's all it's all an attempt to correct so uh, watched a volleyball for seven hours uh, made it back uh, took a uh, took a colossal nap oh, had uh, Seth McFarland's that. Christmas party which was oh, uh, glorious what did you bring us? Oh, I, I, you know, what was the oh, swag? oh, well, this is interesting. So normally he does the embroider ski beanie right. with your logo on it, or you know, the mug or, or something, all that stuff. Uh, this year he hired a bunch of elves who were protesting. What? <laughs> okay. So it was <laughs> people. Dressed as elves, holding up signs Pickets about signs. crossing the line and the unions and scabs and all that. So were they elf size? No, oh. I, they seemed a little smaller than usual, but they were not that. They were just that's funny. People walking around with picket signs. I like it. Light lifting. Yeah, yeah I mean, but you know, because I guess yeah, check coats later. Seth <laughs> figured out that Bill Maher doesn't need another free beanie or something or mug or True. tote or whatever, yeah. whatever it is. This is a better story. Yeah. So there was that. There was him singing. The place is done to the nines. That's there's <laughs> uh, tents and snow machines. I, it's got to be a hundred grand. I, I don't know how you pull that thing was, off was for less Saturday? than a hundred grand. Yeah. This is so rain. So they needed the tents. Needed the tent, everything tented. Big 50-piece orchestra, Seth up there singing, uh, doing uh, – Natalia got the trifecta. She got the volleyball game all day. Then um, when we got home, I forgot that I promised her I would hang six pictures in her room. She got these big posters she wanted to hang up, but I was like, i got to take a nap. What are the posters out? I don't know. Come on. I mean, like, it's just weird girl stuff. Okay, I had like a, an athlete. Or no, no. Singer. It's not what we had. Randy like Chastain? Cheryl Teagues, oh. you know. That'd be weird. Good, <laughs> positive sure. role models. Good messaging. Chicks who, chicks who aren't fat, yeah. wearing next to nothing. And shut the fuck Me up. Messages that needed to be mm -hmm. sent to a young woman. Yes. Uh, no, nah, that's no longer. I have weird takeoffs on like old posters from France in the 40s and okay. stuff. I, I didn't okay. know what's what's hip and cool these days, but I had hung all the posters, then uh, insisted, I didn't insist, but wanted a Seth MacFarlane personal greeting to her, which 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 I got and Seth happily uh, obliged to uh, to do. So uh, nice. she got the she got the trifecta of that. Um, what a day. Party good. Everything's good. What's not to like? Uh, big party. Lots of people showing up. Um, I oh, talked to a couple celebs. I mostly talked to Bill Maher and Seth for, uh, for a long time. Um, and always, always the best. Always to the nines. Always uh, more staff than I ever remember. More people out mm. on the street directing parking. More cops. More security. Mm. Weird... Uh, I fucked up the COVID test again. Oh, God. Two times now. Two times I did the, here's the, uh, here's my, yeah, I'll, I'll come to the party and then got the instant response, the uh, thanks, whatever, and right back to ignoring, never yeah. reading the rest of it right. where I need the COVID test, but they, they did them on site. So uh, they had that. Oh, so the how do you fuck that up? The out of exemption, right? Uh, They're doing it on site. I didn't. That wasn't part of the. Oh, okay. 
I think what they did is they told everyone, go get this COVID test. And then they went, you know, half these people aren't yeah. going to do it. So sure. we'll just do it. Or, or sure. not even half. But if 10% don't no. do it, that's going to be 60 people. We're going to have Waiting to outside. We're going to have to set up their own COVID tent. Smart. So they uh, they did that. Um, let's see. I, what was the food? The Jews want to know. Uh, they They do what you should do, which is a big high-end sushi table where they're making them in front of your face and then over here 80 feet away that's where the carving station is and the mac and cheese is so they go you want to go old school go over there you want to go the sushi boat Mm. go over there yeah you want to do a bang bang do Mm. them both right um there is uh so i watched then a movie last night oh boy did i get reamed oh no i was um so i'll i'll tell you what i'll tell you why sunny and i are sitting around and we're like well let's watch a movie and we're skimming through and there's seven million movies to watch but he's seen it or i haven't seen it or it's good but i shouldn't you know he saw like i never saw um godfather 2 no although yeah (laughs) Sorry, throwing one out there. Now, what is the uh, crystal onion one that's on? Uh, Glass oh, onion? yeah. Glass Knives onion. Out. The Knives Out. out. Right, I want to see Knives yeah. Out. He's seen it three times. So then we're in that. Oh, but it's great. But, uh, He's seen the new one three times? No, he no, saw the, the oh, first original. one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The new one, I don't think was up yet. Okay. Either way. Uh, we're yeah, looking, so not available until the 22nd. We're looking. We're looking. And, you know, they run it on the screen now. Well, they'll run the Rotten Tomatoes score. Mm. So they run uh, one called The Harbinger, and it's a, a thriller, okay. kind of a horror movie or whatever. Had a good poster, and it said uh, 93% on no, Rotten Tomatoes. Come right. on. So we like went past it and went, now, what I figured out with Rotten Tomatoes is Rotten Tomatoes is woke. So I'm a little worried sometimes if it's, a, eh, let's say it's a civil rights story and it's at 93, I'll go, is it that high? Or are they just like the theme of it? Right. But this was a horror thriller, whatever. So I was like, all right, well, let's check this one out. Um, got about 20 minutes in and Sonny like looked at me and went, 93? <laughs> and I was like, it had a black female lead, could have been lesbian, a black family, all women. Right. It, 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 oh, you were like, it had the woke stuff, but it was hiding behind the horror genre. Right. So I didn't know it was the woke stuff. And uh, at the end of the day, it was perfectly serviceable, not that great. Certainly not into the 93s, the 93s. It, it was horrible. It was covid and and woke stuff. They shot it like during COVID. Everyone was doing the mask. Is thing. COVID part of the story? COVID is is part of the story. I forgot how depressed I got watching people act through masks. Mm. <laughs> it was it's be a weird time. Stay. Takes mm-hmm. away from uh, the acting. And I hated all the COVID shit and having to relive the whole wipe down the groceries thing. And then there was it. I it was a. It was serviceable and it was fine, but it was nowhere near 93. And then uh, Sonny, after the movie, said, you got to IMDb them because IMDb is not that woke or right. something. And I don't know where how IMDb... It's user get, generated, totally user votes. Right. So they're not using critics. Correct. Right. So IMDb will now give you what the people... Then I went to check the people... On the Harbinger, uh, should, which will which will help you out a little bit more if you want to get mm-hmm. to the truth, and it said under fifty votes, no consensus yet. And I was like, I, I was interested. Been on fewer than fifty ratings. Now I feel like I've been on there with twelve ratings or three. Huh. So then I was like, Is that a new policy? I don't. I I I've released movies, and you know, comes out that day. And the critics have this score, and there's no audience consensus yet because it's they don't have three uh-huh. yet. But it was never 50. I, I, it, yeah, it, it, it was three. And then I was like, when did the 50 come in? Uh, and so, so it's a couple things. If there's a movie that you suspect is being inflated, and you look at the poster, it just looks like a horror movie. Yeah, so it no, doesn't look like anything. Um, if you... And, expect it's been inflated by the critics who normally 
inflate more woke or cast or themes right. or whatever, then you can check the audience score against it. And if Calibrate it's a, a little bit. Yeah, if it's about the same, then go, okay, Fine, everyone liked this movie. Is. But if you see a nice gap there, like you'll see in certain movies, you may you mm. may want to pass on it. But this is a little suspicious, and I wonder if they're doing that for a reason or, or how it's working. Or maybe they had too many people flood and yeah, show I wonder, up. Yeah, I wonder if the new, the 50-vote threshold, I'm not familiar with that, but I wonder if that's due to like recent review bombing we're all aware oh, of. Yeah. Right? Like I, they might want a certain number. Also, from the critics, it only has 27 reviews, which is small-ish for a modern movie. Avatar is going to have 250 reviews. You know what I mean? Like This mm-hmm. has a fraction of that. 5.9 on IMDb. So I'm just saying uh, you might need to you might need to cross check your yeah. IMDb average. with your critic stuff okay. if there's a wokish theme or a cast. Yeah. Um I have something that may Anyway, end up, not that good. Okay, well <laughs> I'm only vaguely I'm glad you told us cuz we watched we we revisited Shutter Island over the weekend. Oh, At first, I used to call it Shitter Island. I don't know why I didn't like the ending, but now I get it and I'm on board and I apologize. Okay, had a complete opposite moment with the second movie we watched. We were going kind of old school, and I was like, "This is the movie we all love it. Everybody knows this is amazing. We got to watch it. I want to feel all those old feel." Natural Born Killers. Oh. When's the last time you, know you watched what? it? It's been a while. Yeah. There's some great stuff about that movie. Yeah. Rodney Dangerfield the, sitcom. He's fucking yep. fantastic. You know, Quentin sequence. Tarantino wrote it, yes, yeah. which makes perfect sense. But mm-hmm. the, the, the way it's made is, is it, it, it's showing its age. Yes. I, I was watching it and I was like, Andy, I don't know what it is, but I this is cringy. Like with the film strip yeah. and there was, it just, it didn't, it, it's going to make you, it's going to make your skin crawl a little Certain bit. Certain elements don't hold up. Yeah. The stylistically, I was like, I don't feel like a young teenager watching this movie anymore. Speaking of movies, a trope from a movie I was watching, just a big rom-com from 03 that I forgot that's gone now. Let's no. hear it. Uh, Asshole Boss with... <laughs> I thought it was the title. I'm like, I've not heard of that. <laughs> Asshole Boss with the cell phone. A lot of oh, like indicated under, yeah. that he was an under, asshole. Under no, it'd be how he wielded it. Like okay. there'd be okay. like the person come in and go, Mr. Johnska, hold it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah Bob. Sell. So, I don't care what they <laughs> then you tell them I'll come down there and put my boot in their ass and I'm Yeah, okay. Yeah, do it. And hang up. What's that? What you need, Missy? Phone would ring again. Yeah. yeah. Hello? Yeah. Oh, uh yeah, Spago. Uh <laughs> eight PM. Yeah, we'll we'll do the ambassador's booth. Yeah, buy low, sell high. And, yeah, and it was like he was constantly shutting the yes. other person up. Having I gotta wait. take this call. Well, they squirm. They, they, you know, the friendly cab driver would be trying to make conversations yeah. with him. Hold it there, pal. Yeah. Hey, Bob, let's talk Wall Street. <laughs> it, it was like now everyone has a phone. It's just Everyone's it doing it. It just rings. You, know you can't the, use it as a device no. to show the guy's a, an asshole. A distant cousin to that, but still <laughs> shows the same thing. Remember, there was a window for about five, six ish years where if you had the beep, beep, on your car, the remote. Oh yeah, yeah. that was a tell. Asshole. That's you're right. A, you're a jerk off. You're yes. an asshole. I know. Everyone just has that. <laughs> Even the right. pager was a good, oh, yeah. a yeah. good Any indicator. New technology yeah. that beeped yeah. back then. All yeah, right. If you walked over your car, went bleep bleep. You we know exactly. We know everything about you. We need to know. Um, off the cuff. Speaking of cuffs, mm. I think about guys I don't like. Okay. And then I think about Dawson. Oh boy! And I go. He possesses many of the accoutrements. There's of a lot guys of Venn like. diagrams in there. You know? <laughs> and I like Dawson <laughs> bracelets. The exception that proves the rule. One of the guys I study who I don't like, but this could be Dawson. Uh oh. Okay. A guy who wears the jeans cuffed up. You buy jeans. That's not me. Yeah. Two sizes too I know, long. I this is close cousin this, Rockabilly this is like guy. Forty-four year old dude. Yeah. You're not growing, bro. <laughs> Get the fuck if you're 32 mm. Levi's. Right. Then just by all means, mm. they make. Nope, you got to buy them long. You like the then look. you got to get down yeah. and you got to cuff them, which says to the world, what like exactly? Rockabilly greaser. I was going to say thing. rockabilly. It's too. just also kind of hipster. I've seen mm. a lot of just saw one walking around. Just cuff up. 
They don't cuff them four, six inches. They cuff them like inch and a half. Right. It's about it's just a cuff. Thankfully, I haven't seen that in a long time. I saw huh. it an hour ago walking oh. around. I've seen it I've seen it floating around here as this place has gotten a little more gentrified. Oh, boy. But uh, I thought, man, I hate this douche. And then I thought, nobody I know does this. No. And then I Do went, they? oh, my God, what if Dawson does it? No. And I was trying to picture a Dawson boot. I was like, does he do it? It's funny. He could be. He up, could though. do it. He he's definitely potentially <laughs> nah. capable of doing it. If anyone in this building was yeah. capable of cuffing a pant leg, it's you, Dawson. No, never did that. I don't think Dawson's even never a boot really guy. It. As I recall, he just kind of wore shoes. Am I wrong about that? Yeah, I'm wearing a pair of boots right uh, now. I <laughs> no, I, I'm wrong about that. <laughs> <laughs> now I pictured Good. the boot. That but was a test. You passed. I couldn't. I wasn't sure if I was adding the cuff on the boot or not. How do you feel about when ladies do it? Because sometimes we don't get a choice, and I don't have the stitch witchery time to pull it out and make a new hem. Yeah, I wonder. Okay, I will. I'll answer that with this. Okay. First off, I know it's a fashion thing, but it used to be a thing where I'm 13. And mama's going to let these things, not let them out, just will uncuff them right, in a, in a year as I grow. And so when all roads lead to adolescence now, like everyone's going for a younger look, I wonder Understood. if this is just part of the younger look. Now, when it comes to women, cut them a wide swath. All mm. bets are off. They're mm-hmm. trying to track people, things that are trendy, things that make sense sure. or don't Interest. make sense. I don't, mm. I don't. I do not. I would like to have a symposium where I spoke to women and said, like, giant hoop earrings and super long fingernails are not hiding your fat ass. Mm. That's the name of the symposium. I I can still see your giant ass through the huge gaping hole in your earrings. Right. And while the fingernails are impressive, it has not drawn my attention sufficiently to get away from the big ass. So I would like to say, like, Dropping a few pounds or a couple little nips and tucks here. These, these are much more effective if you're mm-hmm. trying to attract somebody. And then women explain they're doing it for other women mm-hmm. who also enjoy giant hoops mm-hmm. hanging from their earrings. But there's certain things I would like to tell them that, look, if you're, if you're, in, if you're in the business of trying to attract males, this is not, not, Got it. not the way to go about it. But you guys knock yourself out. Okay. These are the rules for society. Got it. I'm much more interested in what the dudes are up to. Got it. All right, this let has me, been my TED Talk. Let me hit uh, my simply safe property crimes like burglaries and uh, package thefts. Well, they're spiking during the winter because uh, getting a lot of packages brought to the home. Now's the best time to secure your home with award winning home security from Simply Safe. Make a resolution to start the new year with greater peace of mind and safety. We love these guys. We all use them here. They've been uh, sponsors for many years. Named best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report. Third year in a row, 24 7 professional monitoring. Cost under a buck a day. Less than half the price of traditional home security systems. Simply safe. Well, they got an app you can arm or disarm. Unlock for a guest who's coming in from out of town. Access cameras or just. System settings anywhere, anytime, Simply Safe, right, Dawson? Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash Adam. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off your order with interactive monitoring. That's simplysafe.com slash Adam. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, we'll take a break. Max Pat is coming in. He's got trending topics, and then Todd Rundgren is joining us right after this. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so, Adam. When we were doing the trending topics last time, I was telling you like how I can't play R. Kelly songs live when I mm. when I play at bars and stuff because people <laughs> is that people, a problem? Didn't yeah, age well. people give me dirty looks. There was a time when like Michael Jackson songs did that too. That that's kind of fading. But no, mm-hmm. I believe I can fly. No, it's yeah, it's really remixed to ignition. That's yeah. that's okay. the that's mm. the track that everyone. I, I don't know. I I love it, but <laughs> it's a shame I can't play it live anymore. But he was trend. R. Kelly was trending over the weekend. And the reason was supposedly he, okay. So it was reported that he dropped a new album while in prison. Like mm-hmm. so he somehow found a, a studio, yeah. wow. recorded an album's worth of songs, and released it online. Well, 
everything sounds like unlikely, like in prison, but it's like, eh, the guys have cell phones and yeah. they get cocaine and Richard Speck was transitioning into a woman and yeah. guards were playing with his titties yeah. and when he was doing blow, it's like... It's possible. Yeah, I, he I, stuck I, I a no microphone up his butt and, and got in yeah, there. Yeah, I no longer go, it's impossible, right. he's in prison. Don't they have programs too? Like they're like a broadcasting program, creative writing, you know, they'll have people come yeah. in. It, like, it's, it's all possible. It's not impossible. Yeah, well... Uh, so and so, so the, the album was reportedly called "I Admit It." Oh boy! Mm. Like OJ, up, the was if up, I did it was mm. up on Apple and Spotify and all the all the places you find finer music, and uh, and there was a, a 19 minute track called "I Admit It." I did it, mm. and um, so R. Kelly gets he 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 finally gets on record. He calls his lawyer and he's like. What the hell? I didn't release an album. So everybody's freaking out that he got this new music and everyone's listening to it. Spotify immediately pulls it down. Apple pulls it down. And there's audio that TMZ obtained with his lawyer. And we'll, lis- we'll listen to it. So let's listen to the first the How first long was he in for? Wow. I think it was like he was he's, uh, sentenced like 30 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, good question. Yeah, very good question. Now he, he's, he's he thinks, oh, somebody's trying to mess with my mm-hmm. appeal. Um, because oh, other tracks on the album, by the way, I found love, good old days, freaky sensation. Mm-hmm. Now this, I admit, it's on the 19 minute track w- was actually out in 2018 on R. Kelly SoundCloud. Mm. So, yeah, and I'll, I'll read you some lyrics. Um, I admit I done made some mistakes and I have some imperfect ways. I admit I helped so many people. And then same damn people turned fake. But one night at the Ritz, did some shit I shouldn't have did. When effed my N-words bitch, okay. I admit, I admit that I did. And it, these lyrics are like a novel. Like it, th- that's, that's uh, like 1% of the lyrics in the, wow. in the song. Wow, totally unrelated. Dawson, is it too late for Ace Awards drops? <laughs> <laughs> and I sent you something yesterday. Yeah, well, and, um, and, and R. Kelly's now saying, that's not even me singing. People don't know my voice. Mm-hmm. And we have, yeah, listen to the rest of that call. This is really just fucked up. It just really is, man. And if, um, you know, I'm standing here looking in the mirror, saying damn to myself, I should have known the day would come. She would find somebody else. This is his lawyer. All the things I took her through. First so, this is me. This is my voice, and I would know for the album out right now and I definitely ain't gonna put a damn alcohol I admit it. But here this recorded I, call is <laughs> at a California I like to play a little game which is picture what the other person on the phone is doing. Like yeah. I, I picture the lawyer <laughs> Like standing in his kitchen, making a Denver omelet and watching CNN, like watching the crawl on CNN is like, fuck R. Kelly. Yeah. All right, just sets the phone down, but he's probably walking back and forth to the fridge and looking back at the CNN yeah. crawl, you know. Feeding his like, dog. Yeah. Our right. singing in the background, you know, yeah. He'd come yeah. back. Yeah. Now, Drew? Hmm? hmm? Yeah. Hey, this is R. Kelly. Crazy. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I don't know if you're as upset as I am over this recent revelation. Right, right. Yeah, listen to me. Um, I believe I can fly. I believe that's my voice. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening to me, Tim? No, no, the phone is not on, the TV is not on. I'm listening to you. <laughs> okay, you're listening then. All right, so you heard, but I believe I can touch the sky. I believe I can fly. That's my voice. Some guy put out some track, said, uh, if I was guilty, I may be guilty. I probably done it. That's some bullshit right there. And I, what I need you to do is uh, what they call a cease and assist. Hmm. Are you writing this down, Tim? Yeah. 
Tim, are you are you making another Denver omelet watching the CNN crawl in your kitchen while I languish here in prison? Uh, well, sometimes I do. Okay, <laughs> but well, now I need you to listen to me. That guy did. Did you hear the I can I believe I can fly part? That's did you hear that part? Right. Yeah, that's that's me. That's me singing. Okay. Right. All right, so I assume you're going to jump on this, uh, as I like to say, post-haste or too sweet. Right. Uh, all right, so hop on this. Now, I don't get to, I only get to use the phone for three minutes a day, so I'm going to call you back this time tomorrow. And Crazy. I'm, yeah, listen to me. Sure going to have something drafted up when I call you up at this time tomorrow. Uh, I, I... Tim? Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. Yeah, he's not, doesn't stand like a chance. He's yeah. not really That appeal's right. not looking good. No, he's no. staying in prison. Yeah. yeah. Shouldn't a, should a record company just like go, hey, this, was a no, this fake album was a number one record over the weekend. We should just get a studio at, at that prison yeah. and yeah. have them lay something Remix down. Remix it. Yeah. yeah. This is a demand, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, they, they're always... I mean, I never really get the part... I don't get the part with the tax evasion part where... They're going to take you and they're going to lock you up. Uh, go out and earn it off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, we owe the government, you owe the government $6.5 million. And then we're going to pay $65,000 a year to incarcerate you for three years You're so right. you can't earn? Yeah. Like, go, go fucking earn it off. Yeah, I make an album. Servant. Yeah, not, like not my they, license plate. Do you feel like they learned their lesson after Wesley Snipes with like Nick Cage? Like, oh, we, we, this, we could have gone about this a lot differently. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's he, where this he did make a bevy of that's movies. That's why we have the filmography we do over the last 10 years. Well, they did, right. They did with, uh, oh, God, Willie the Nelson? Brown Bomber, oh. Joe Lewis. Oh. They've had like, plenty of instances where it's like, hey, boxer guy or whoever, entertainer, you owe us money as a government. They they say there's no debtor's prison. This always bothers me. But the government can lock you True. up. But if you rent this warehouse and never pay me, the government can't do anything about that. Correct. But they will incarcerate your ass. But Joe Lewis, they just sent out exhibition matches, USO shows, and stuff like that. It was like, just go get your head caved in and go work it off. At the very least, they should give you the choice. Yeah. Yeah, just go work it off. I mean, the government, you're presumably... You're not locking the person up because they put their hands on somebody. Right. You're locking them up because they owe you money. So they're tax cheap. Go let them yeah, earn. The yeah, yeah, let them earn it out. Give them a chance yeah, to redeem themselves. Like for Wesley Snipes, like, Brian, if your daughter, like, when she's older, she's careful, like, hey, hey, Dad, careful. who's... Who's Wesley Snipes? Who's Wesley Snipes? Would, would you would you say his acting credits? Or would you say an actor that dodged a bunch of texts? I lead with the acting, but uh, you, it's, it's one of those like uh, first paragraph of the obituary. Like mm. you can't leave out, you know, OJ like, killed his wife. How did that you wonder who had a uh, mixed post playing career? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, speaking of sports. Um, Grant Wall was a yeah. big trending topic mm. over the weekend. Uh, he was a soccer journalist. Mm. So, 48 years old, and it was reported that he died during a game at the World Cup. Uh, suddenly, right? And, I mean, everybody put their conspiracy hats on. This is this is pretty weird. Cause and they were showing his shirt. He was show- Yeah, so he, he made headlines because he tried to get in wearing uh, the LGBT rainbow mm-hmm. shirt. He was, his brother's gay. And, um, they don't love that there. They don't. Mm-mm. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But so he's he he was reporting. So he he was re- writing some um, reports that weren't very favorable to the Qatari mm-hmm. government, and and talking about how they were really uh, lethargic, or apathetic about like some migrant workers dying during the building of the stadium and things like that. And um, so, but he did also say like, hey, I've been experiencing some chest tightness and mm-hmm. and uh, bronchitis. And bronchitis like uh, symptoms, and but should be fine. It's just I just not feeling very good. And now everybody's like, how did this guy die all of a sudden? Like you, you seem to be a healthy guy minus like the the new symptoms, which weren't COVID nineteen. He did get checked on that, and um, everyone's demanding an investigation. And actually, Eric, his brother, posted this video um, that went viral over the weekend as well. We were just talking straight into the camera. My brother was healthy. He told me he received death threats. I do not believe my brother just died. I believe he was killed. And I just 
beg for any help. Yeah. So it's definitely on hold. While like if this were Canada, would be we be making this video? No, it's like a you know. Unfortunately, it's it's a different area where sometimes shady things may happen. Mm-hmm. We don't really know. And uh, so it's just so his body has been returned to America yesterday. Mm-hmm. And they're obviously going to run an investigation, right. an autopsy, and see what happened. But I mean, it's it's just a weird story. Well, I you know. People do die. They yeah, plenty of people just die under fifty. They just die. So it it happens. So you can't necessarily connect the dots. But I and who knows what substances that we're unaware of. You know, like what powders could be put into a drink or something. You know, we're all kind of cyanide and mm. Nazi war right. criminal. That's from the. 40s like so the bit advances yeah. someone no developed arsenic. something that could rub on your skin mm-hmm. and you go to cardiac arrest and then dr bowden couldn't detect it you know mm-hmm. i'm sure it's out there it's possible. yeah of course and uh, if it was they they're probably capable of it well, so yeah but didn't another guy yeah. die so now it's just reported a second uh, uh photo journalist died uh khalid al mislam he's a qatari and they announced it. And supposedly he died hours after Grant Wall did. Oh, shit. They drank for the same cup. <laughs> exactly. Well, and, but uh, so was they, he pro-gay rights and no, that's not, about see, it? Exactly. That's not, that's not reported. There's so, actually a lot, very little information about, about yeah, him. Yeah, so now you have this event and hundreds of thousands of people converge from all around the world. And uh, the couple aren't going home, yeah. statistically, if you're going to have mm-hmm. this many people show up. But if this guy was very into the gay movement and fighting with the government about wearing a shirt or something, then now so you're building right. a mystery, is like the great the Sarah McLaughlin. Right. Say. But well remember, done. oh, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. God, I love that song. <laughs> it's good. But that's, but, and the, I'm, not, I'm not saying these two are the same, obviously, but we even talked about how just this regular Danish guy talking about stuff that's going on in the World Cup, it's all good in the middle of a yogurt stand, that shit got shut down immediately. So they, they do have thoughts about things, mm-hmm. and they do like to wield their power. Yes. Right. Yeah, but uh, are they taking action? Who knows? Well, see, that if, if they're taking action, I, well, there's a, we talked about how they, uh, they definitely denied him entrance and frowned on Grant's, Grant wearing the rainbow shirt. But there is a, a fan. Her name's Ivana Noll. She's a Croatian fan. I don't know if you've seen her. She calls herself the World Cup's hottest okay. fan. No boy. Yeah, but, wait, I'll well, be the judge take a, of that. Yeah, take, well, <laughs> well, let's put her up. There's a video of her. And, um, yeah, she, she goes to all the Croatia games. Everybody's looking at her. Uh, she wears very uh, scandalous outfits. That's kind of a Katy Perry vibe, I guess. Yeah. Usually the midriff's bare, but uh, I wanted to show some motion. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, supposedly she's she's able to go to all the games, and everyone everyone's okay with it. But... I, th- she says like everyone's okay at the games, but everyone on Twitter is is shocked that she's there. So she's a so the point is that like she's dressed so scandalously, yeah. she shouldn't be let in that way. Right. Interesting. For yeah, she looks like a picnic reserved blanket. audience. Yes. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, she looks mm-hmm. like she work at rallies or something. Yeah, yeah she's falling. A, just because you're tan and you're not fat doesn't make you hot, but mm-hmm. it helps. <laughs> sure. That's no, the way yeah, I look at it. Those two steps in the mm-hmm. direction. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I was talking to the guys here. And, um, yeah, for 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 men, like what makes us hot? I've been really into back muscles lately. Like, just oh, is it, totally. our backs, backs are hot, right? Backs are so hot. Chick yeah. back muscles. No, guy backs. Talking? Like, guys? Oh, I'm talking about women. But yeah, yeah, yeah totally no, women too. A, a, this is a test. <laughs> this is a test. There's, we cannot fail. Let's move I, on. No, literally, you know the movie Chicago with Renee mm-hmm. Zellweger and Catherine. Z- there's a there's a montage where they're like getting them all ready for like their prison stay, and they they do Renee Zellweger. She looks like her hands are out like on a cross because they're measuring you for prison. And I was like, damn, her back is fucking sexy. But you weren't yeah. talking about women. Well, just I just I just admire the human form. Sure I, you but do. I just say yeah, I, I'm impressed by back muscles lately. I don't mm. know what's going okay, on with me. Well. Yeah, that's it. Simply, I hope, I hope Jen's cool with that. <laughs> The Qatar government may be. <laughs> yeah, you, may have, you may have just made a list. <laughs> of drink. All right, let me tell you about Solo Stove. Oh man, nothing quite like gathering around a warm fire on a cool evening, smokeless fire pit. Now it's the weather for a fire pit. Although I busted my Solo Stove out, daughter and her friends came by and we made s'mores on it. That was Fourth of July. Instead of dodging the fumes, you can just sit around the fire and. Uh, they're having a holiday event sale. You can get uh, a great deal 
on a solo stove fire pit. This stuff burns so efficiently, so easily. Stainless steel, it's a great construction designed to regulate airflow and burn more efficiently. Brilliantly engineered, built to last, even comes with a carrying case. Uh, easy to light, just a few bits of starter. It is a game changer. It's the perfect size. It's all you need. Treat yourself. And there's a lifetime warranty and a 30-day free return policy, but you're going to love it. It's Solo Stove, right, Dawson? Let the gifting begin. Shop Solo Stove's holiday event sale for huge site-wide savings and get $10 off with promo code ADAM, plus a lifetime warranty and free 30-day returns. Get an extra $10 off holiday deals at solostove.com, promo code ADAM. Uh, what all right. else is trending? Well, uh, Zion. Mm. Yeah, so Zion Williamson. That's right. Hey. That, I just need to say Zion. Come on, uh, you're familiar with this this player, right? He plays the basketball for the, player. The, yeah, he plays for the Pelicans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Pelicans are currently number one mm. right now because they played they played against the uh, that number one team, the Suns. And at the end of the game, Pelicans were up by a lot. But here's what happened. We'll just we'll just put it up on the screen. Um, usually seven seconds left. Larry Nance throws it out to nine. Zion. You're up by nine points. Ooh. Zion does Fancy. a 360 oh. windmill dunk. It's frowned upon. Fair, uh, yeah, so the rules, Gina, are that you don't do that. You, you don't just get dribble style it out. points? No, you don't, you don't dunk. You don't, you don't add. Nine seconds left. You know, it's a windmill jam when you're up. I, yeah, what they're saying is you don't score. You don't try to score, I guess. Right, you, 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 you already out. won. Poor you dribble it out. Yeah, it's poor sportsmanship. That, that you do that. And uh, things got really chippy. Uh, Chris Paul was uh, mouthing off and both you know, benches cleared and they had to... Benches they had to pull cleared? They had to pull everybody away. Yeah. Although yeah. they don't have benches anymore. They have individual padded yeah. seats. Right. Yeah. No pine Steel anymore. Chair. No, no pine to ride. No. Um, I'm like... You know, they do this. They'll do it in college football, too, when yeah. the team will be up by 35 points. They'll be down on the goal line, and there's 20 seconds, and they try to punch mm-hmm. it in versus victory right. formation, yeah. take right. a knee and all that kind of stuff. And look, um, I guess I would say at the high school level, I would go, hey, you shouldn't do that. You know, you fucked up the 15-year-old with the learning disability who is riding the pine. But when everyone's a cajillionaire yeah. and you're all in the pro level at this point, yeah, I get now what you do is you get it gives the other team a little fuel for the next time you play. Oh, yeah. see each other again. And uh, there's uh, there's that, you know, corkboard material mm-hmm. or something. They, put the, they used to put the clip up of these guys saying you're sucked or you're overrated <laughs> or whatever and they get the team motivated. But eh, in a, in a in a in a league where entertainment is a, is valued, uh, yeah. you know they don't tickets are paid for. You don't ever have to dunk. You could just <laughs> drop the ball, and you certainly don't need to windmill or do three sixties. But they'll do it in the course of the right. game. Eh, fine. We had we had a robust conversation about this. We ended up agreeing. Do you remember? I don't know, six seven years ago, USC UCLA football. USC's up by twenty one points with ten seconds left. They take a knee. UCLA calls a timeout, symbolically suggesting, hey, man, we're playing to the final whistle. We're calling a timeout here. And USC is, in your words, oh, it's on. We're right. still playing. Right. Fucking 50-yard touchdown. <laughs> UCLA had the goal to be all butthurt about it. So you motherfuckers <laughs> called a timeout. We're still playing football, apparently. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Knee. Play to the whistle. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. It's, um, it's the great uh, John Rambo said they drew first blood. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, they did. Now, this was not that. Look, a- anytime a 280-pound dude can do a 360 windmill jam. We should applaud that. And I bought a ticket to that game. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's fine with yeah. me. So Years ago, this guy literally had his shoe explode. Not literally, but his shoe exploded on his foot. Yeah, it, it broke apart just from him pivoting. Like, yeah. it, it's, oh, man. That was like me and condoms. Of like, <laughs> boom. <laughs> yeah. Literally, try to make one move. Oh. Repositioning yeah. one time. <laughs> Oh, and uh, speaking of of the Pelicans, so they used to be called the Hornets, Dina. Uh, Hornets originated in Charlotte, but now yeah. Charlotte got the name back. But uh, I was looking at the Charlotte Hornets logo. It's very similar to the Bucks, uh, the Bucks evolution of the oh, of the mean? logo. I think, yeah, yeah. We'll put it. We'll put it up. But the it's, Bucks went from happy Christmas sweater yeah. to demonic <laughs> robo evil deer, deer with, yeah. with dead eyes, yeah, dead doll eyes. 
Yeah. Do you guys yeah. have thoughts about um, the Celtics? Because we're going to the Lakers Celtics game tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Do they have a coach this year? Celtics Rivalry. are great. Okay, great. Can't wait. Yeah, I don't know if they have a per- they, they have permanent <laughs> coach or he might. Did, did he get any job? I, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't follow the. <laughs> Oh, oh, you're right. Look at this. So, that yeah. one's adorable. The little chubby one, oh, little oh, horn. Larry like Johnson's horn. Larry Johnson, yeah. Happy Grandma mascot Ma. to evil yeah. Demonic disease murder spreader. Murder hornet. Yeah. Murder hornet. Yeah. Murder yeah. Hornet. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought no, it was it's a good, good, uh, good take. Very true. Yeah. Uh, you could probably go through 25 college <laughs> and or pro logos that have been updated, yes. and they all went... The way strippers went with, the, oh. I got tattoos right. and piercings now and I'm fucking angry versus right. the old happy stripper. I feel like the aforementioned UCLA had like a friendly Bruin at one point, like years ago, and now they're like, you know, they're, they're deadly. Take a yeah. bite out of you. Yeah, the angry logo. could be wrong about that. I feel like it, though. All right, one more. All right. Um, well, you already talked about Musk's tweet. Do you want to do you want to dive more? Oh yeah, deeper sure. Into that? Okay, so well, Fauci was trending, and I was like, why is Fauci? Yeah. He kind of dropped off, and you know, he announced he's done at the end of the year. Like, why am I hearing more about Dr. Fauci? Who, by the way, I didn't. I've never heard of before the pandemic no. and before COVID no. too. So it's kind of so it's interesting. I thought maybe he just faded back into my own personal obscurity. obscurity. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he, uh, so. It was because of Elon's tweet. So Elon Elon tweeted his pronouns, which were prosecute slash Fauci. It's good. And, uh, Clever. Yeah, and uh, and definitely ignited Twitter. Like, look, it has over a million likes. It went viral. Um, and so... <laughs> I thought I said comedy is a lot on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> so astronaut Scott Kelly. Oh, yeah. He was he was not happy with this. He Isn't tw- that Gabby Gifford's husband? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. The twi- and he's Arizona? A, yeah. yeah, and he's a twin brother of Senator Mark Kelly from oh. Arizona. No, I don't know. Yeah, uh, sorry. So, uh, One so of them is. Scott yeah. Kelly, he says, quote, Elon, please don't mock and promote hate toward an already marginalized and at risk of violence members of the LGBTQ plus community. And uh, so Elon responds. Oh, is Fauci gay? So he, oh. no, no. Yeah, he's See, going for the other angle. This is part of the pronoun problem. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and... Uh, and uh, um, Musk, re- Musk replied, I strongly disagree. Forcing your pronouns upon others when they didn't ask and implicitly ostracizing those who don't is neither good nor kind to anyone. As for Fauci, he lied to Congress and funded gain of function research that killed millions of pe- people. Not awesome, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Wait, what? What was he, the last part? He, he lied to Congress and funded gain of function yeah. at the Wuhan lab. Oh. And he was down oh. with that. So that's what they've always said. And now we're going to find out. So so here's what happened. Um, the, there's a lab. It's nearby. And everyone dismissed that. Now, again, you have to ask yourself why Fauci and or heads of CDC and WHO and CNN and ABC, and why are they all so immediately dismissive of the Chinese lab that is working on gain of function viruses? Oh, it's it's a razor. It's, yeah. it's, it's definitely not them. Really? Uh, we don't know anything. Yeah. China won't give us any information, yeah. but CNN and LA Times, you guys definitely know that anyone who thinks the virus that came from the lab that works on these viruses is a crackpot. And it must have come from a wet market and a pangolin. So I'm already suspicious immediately because I will take agnostic every day of the week. I will take, well, what? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Makes sense, but I don't know. There's not inherently a side to claim on that. Yeah, everyone immediately. (laughs) What expertise do you have? What insight do you have? Everybody shot down. And people were deplatformed for suggesting that it came. So then my first argument is, why do you protest so much? when you cannot know whether this happened or not. You can file it under Hunter Biden's laptop. How do you know that this is something that you don't know? And why are you so sure of something that you don't know? Now I'm suspicious. So he was trying to tamp that down. Everyone was trying to tamp that down. And then I think a lot of people went, why are you trying to tamp that down when you don't know? He has moved Fauci has moved to agnostic. So you have to watch just in time people's, <laughs> people's movement, which is Evolution. he went from uh, didn't come from the lab to how do I know where yeah. it came from? Right. So that suggests some movement, movement there. Yeah. And 
Joe Biden with the laptop went from I never talked to my son about any business dealings ever to we America's ready to move forward. <laughs> so he's changed his. So when, he, when, it, when, the, when the narrative starts changing a little yeah. bit there's something there yeah and also like Elon, you 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 joke about how like elon and jeff bezos when they want to move to mars is because they know something i think elon would have a little more information than than most and the True. public like he would he would be have access to yeah, that but Fa- i don't know fauci knew things and did things and communicated with with people and stuff's gonna stuff's gonna come out now well, it, it i could, hate that it should never he's just fauci he should have just been Doing his best, and well, we all trust him. On the look, the, on the the good side would be look. Uh, maybe I fudged a, some of the data, but I was trying to save lives, just right. like they used to. You know, secondhand smoke's a firsthand killer. Fifty thousand people die of secondhand smoke every year. AIDS is an equal opportunity killer. Everyone wear a condom. You go, all right. Well, they're lying, but they want you to put a condom on. Mm. So ooh, we get it. Yeah, there's that. But the, the but the. The dark side is is we funded this shit in Wuhan with gain of function, and we we have our fingerprints on it. That's what the news calls an oopsie daisy. That yeah. would be a deeper and, one. And also, uh, Elton left Twitter because of Elon. Elton, Elton John. Elton John. Elton. I only need to say Elton. Oh. R.I.P. I don't want to have to choose between Elton and Elon. <laughs> yeah, he says. I don't want to live in that world. Where there's an Elton and an Elon. Elon. Elton, who just uh, he did his uh, final U.S. show at Dodger Stadium. I don't know if you guys caught that mm-hmm. on Disney Plus. It's Really good. I mean, what a performer. He says, all my life I've tried to use music to bring people together, yet it saddens me to see how misinformation is now being used to divide our world. I decided to no longer use Twitter, given their recent change in policy, which will allow misinformation to flourish. He's such a pussy. I'm sorry. I didn't know he was on Twitter. (laughs) You get specific about the COVID misinformation that you're talking about, because... They've been wrong about all of it. Well, not just he didn't say it was COVID misinformation. Well, this is at least at least Elon is directing this one toward Fauci. But all right, give I'm us missing. your instances of misinformation, Elton. It's, it's, it's not information. It's information you disagree with. No. It's not misinformation, or some of it is. But then that's a two way street. Is Todd on hold? Is he? Is he? Uh, you put the sign it up. It was and up. You yes. It down Thumbs or, up. Is that how? We're, you can leave it up. All right. Because otherwise, I could misinterpret that. Are you ready to bring it home, Max Spana? Sure, check out the Water Cooler Podcast. Max Spana. His real name's Lot Spana. Todd Rundgren is going to join us right after this. Good to see you, Todd. Good to be here. Uh, and here for you is Maui, right? No, the island of Kauai. Oh. Oh. The Garden Island. Are you there? Yeah. Full, are you there full time? Uh, well, I am for the rest of this year, but I've been on the road about ten months this year. But this is my permanent home. Yeah. Are you on the Poipu side or on the Hanalei side, or somewhere uh, I don't even know about? The, the the North Shore, okay. which is uh, Hanalei, is not too far from here. Beautiful, beautiful. What a what a life! So it's out on the road and then return to paradise, Smart. right? Uh, more or less, I'm, you know, I, um, I feel guilty when I'm at home and then I feel homesick when I'm not at home. And so it's a, it's a strange paradox. I have to go on the road in order to be at home. And then when I'm at home, I realize how lucky I am and maybe I should get back on the road again. (laughs) You must have gotten started and had success at a very young age because you're not old now and you i mean i've been listening to your stuff for forever uh was you, was you i mean it's night we got to get you a woman is that 1970 yeah it's around the first the, one uh the first uh solo record that i had i was in a band before that called the naz uh, for a couple of years. So I guess my first record would have been when I was about 19. Um, in 1968, I believe, 1968 or 69, the NAS put out uh, Open My Eyes with a, a dirgy little song called Hello, It's Me on the B-side. Wow. Uh, and then years later, I re-recorded it and it became my most popular single, save for one other song called bang the drum all day oh um, which became a sports anthem and a um 
and a cruise line theme yes, until, they started, right. until they started sinking all those boats and then they figured that they better change their image. I totally forgot, and I'm going to blame my crack team for not putting bang the drum all day on here, is it? Or am I missing it? I see it. That, that was a crazy hit. Because they used to play it. it was one of those local radio Fridays. Oh, yeah, of course. Kayla, I don't, don't want to work. work. Um, Friday drive time, time, yeah. The drum. They would play it at like 3 o'clock every <laughs> oh, yeah. Friday, and I'd be driving my truck home from a construction site, you know, going to back. <laughs> Woo! Remember when Friday used to mean oh, something? Yeah. Now, now it's just another day. Oh, right? yeah, it's just another day now. But, man, when you swing a hammer all week, uh, Friday <laughs> at 3.30 oh. and KLOS playing Celebrate. this, I would be singing in my truck while I was driving home. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a strange song um, from my standpoint because I didn't, Technically, I didn't write it. I didn't sit down and, and think, oh, I'm going to write a song about um, hating your job and <laughs> and banging on a drum. Um, I actually dreamed the song. I dreamed the song nearly complete. And all I had to do was remember it long enough to record it. Mm. And I remember after I did, I said, where did this come from? This song is ridiculous. I don't... Uh, I don't really identify with it that much because I'm self-employed. Um, and then, you know, it was on a record called uh, Ever Popular Tortured Artist Effect. It was never released as a single. And just at some point, it started to find a life of its own. It started at like sporting events and, as you say, Friday drive time, things like that, um, hockey games, and eventually, I think like the Green Bay Packers, it was their touchdown song. <laughs> And Which I, it still is. It still is their touchdown song whenever sure. they score a touchdown. I know. Aaron and is, then, Aaron Rodgers doesn't hear it as much as he yeah, used to. Lots of lots of these days. <laughs> I don't know. But I and I never see Todd Rundgren was always, Hello, it's me. It's just mm -hmm. completely different and we gotta get you a woman, which we should cue up because that's a funny I say I like that myself. A lot of my early musical influences are like um like Gilbert and Sullivan and uh <laughs> And the Marx Brothers, things like that. You know, everyone says I love you. Da, 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 da. Um, and um, the song itself had an interesting history because I was mostly working as a record producer and engineer at the time. And, and the album that that song is on was just a vanity project. I had no intention of like becoming a rock star or anything or going out on the road and playing. I was done with that. Uh, and then accidentally it became a hit. Uh, not as big a hit as it could have been because there was a somewhat militant feminist movement at the time and they took umbrage at a at a single line in the song and they started uh phoning in bomb threats to a radio station what? if they played the record really <laughs> uh, and so well there's a there's a if if you don't understand how grammar works, sometimes you can misinterpret the meaning of the lyrics. There's a part in the second bridge that goes, things about that special one, they may be stupid, but they sure are fun. And for some reason, people thought I was talking about women in general, as oh. in as they may be stupid, which is grammatically incorrect. It's things, it's things. about that special mm -hmm. one, you know, little quirks that people have, you know, the little dumb things they do, like they got a laugh that you can't stand, but you love them anyway, <laughs> that kind of thing, you know. And so they completely misinterpreted the lyrics, thought I was making some sort of judgment about women in general. And so uh, it got to a certain level and then um, radio stations stopped picking it up. <laughs> I um, would have, but people still want to hear it today. It's, it's weird. a great song, and I would have put yeah. money on it was the lyric. Uh, I got a backhand like John McEnroe. The bitch steps up. I'm smacking the hoe, yeah, yeah. Oh. which is <laughs> a few of 
more egregious the, by today's standards. more on the nose. It comes after the bridge, but yeah. it was about, yeah, it was it was pretty about lightweight. But um, yeah, but you have to realize it was a it was a nascent movement at the time. You know, feminism was a new thing back in the late '60s, early '70s. You know, well, we should it, hear that lyric now, because uh, no, 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 don't bother with that. You know? Well, play the <laughs> yeah. end, then play the little twist at the end. This is why I always like the song because it has oh, a button yeah. at the end. You always thought, oh, that guy's smart. They're clever. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how selfless of him <laughs> <laughs> to get you a woman first before he gets his own. Right. Well, you're talking about being a producer, and I know you were set to produce for Janis Joplin's third album, but it kind of fell apart. Can you tell us that story? Well, um, I was working for the Albert Grossman organization. Um uh, he's not a name that's familiar to people nowadays, but in the 60s, he was like the world's premier manager. He managed Bob Dylan. You know, he's managing all these uh, folk acts and uh, he was managing the band, um, which was the first big break I had working on Stage Fright. And um, the... Uh, the idea i had been in a band already you know and the idea of like being in a band the politics of and stuff didn't appeal to me so i thought i'll just make records not realizing what the politics were in terms of making records it was kind of like the same thing except you you get it over with and within a couple of weeks you know and then move on with your life but there's still you know a great psychological component uh, a political component sometimes to making records and uh albert put me together with janice uh she had left big brother big brother was a thing of the past and they were trying to put together a new band and he sent me out to uh, mill valley in california where she was living and people would traipse in all day long with songs for her for her next record and i was there kind of organizing the whole process and then suddenly in the middle of this somebody who had written a song in albert's office said you got to record this right now. You know, screw that whole album thing that you're talking about. You got to record this song right now. And it wasn't a song I particularly liked. And I don't think Janice thought about it much. But I had never done a session yet with Janice. I just knew her from her shenanigans up in Mill Valley. So they said, okay, you're going to get together with the Butterfield Band, with the Paul Butterfield Band. You're going to go down to L.A., and you're going to record this song. And we all resigned ourselves to that. She had never worked with the Butterfield band before. There was no arrangement for the song. So they're working it out in the studio. And I learned something about Janice during the process, which is that she hates making records. <laughs> uh, without an audience, she's like a whole different person. You know, oh. she needed the audience, you know, to feed off of in order for her to get fully into it. And if there wasn't an audience there, she some there was something missing to her and she didn't really enjoy the process of working in the studio. So, you know, we fiddled around with the song, worked on it, thought we were making some progress. And then, uh, of course, we're in a union studio. And after three hours, they call a break. <laughs> so we're just about to get there and they call a break and the steam goes out of the entire process. You know, we all realized we were being, you know, we had a gun to our head to do this thing. And so we just settled for the takes that we had, which eventually appeared in some sort of anthology, some post-mortem anthology to Janis Joplin. Did she die shortly thereafter? Well, she got the album done, the, the album uh, called Pearl. Wow, that's, uh, that's a huge album. Yeah. And uh, it's an interesting thing when you're making records. Uh, the artist, of course, you assume has some sort of style or mode of working. But as a producer, you also have a certain style or a mode uh, of working. And uh, mine, I, I was very sort of... Um, uh, productivity oriented you know so you go in the studio and you start making music right away you know you don't go in there to crap around um and as i say she had a whole a different sort of thing and so me going in there and trying to organize the process and get her not to think about the fact that she's in the studio wasn't exactly what she needed she needed what paul rothschild gave her which was just kind of constant 
you're great. You're the great constant ego stroking the whole time, you know, and if you did that, then she was more comfortable in the studio because that was the kind of feedback that she needed. She needed to be kind of like adored in order for her to feel confident about what she was doing. And I'm not that kind of producer. I don't just, you know, throw compliments at people for no reason. You know, I want to get them into a condition to um, to actually perform the song in a way that they would if the audience was in front of them. It looks like they changed the name of the band for the album, the Full Tilt Boogie Band. Well, it was a whole different band. Oh, it yeah. was. Okay. Butterfield was Big a, Brother. Big Brother was a bunch of company, guys yeah. from San Francisco. The Full Tilt Boogie, Boogie Band was mostly a bunch of guys from Canada. Oh, really? Well, the band was from Canada. And when Albert started managing the band, he suddenly saw Canada as this whole new kind of uh, fertile ground for finding talent and stuff. So he started... Uh, um, I remember one of my first productions was another band from Canada. You know, they were a great band, but they happened to be from Canada. Uh, it was a phase that Albert went through. Mm. So, uh, yeah, all of the guys, most all of the guys in the Full Tilt Boogie Band were in various other Canadian bands. Butterfield was pretty well known then. I think there may be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, or am I making that up? Did they, someone can check which band butterfield uh is it paul butterfield well they should they certainly should be i i, I don't they know are. they are well see i don't keep track of that you know <laughs> i i didn't even show up for my own induction so that's I don't, so you know, rock and roll what year were you inducted <laughs> uh the year before this uh the recent induction with dolly parton the year before that why why not show up well, because it would have been hypocritical of me. I always thought the whole idea was ridiculous to start with. Um, musicians are not like athletes. Athletes eventually can't play anymore, and you get the measure of their accomplishments. And then you can decide, you know, how they stack up against everyone else, and then you put them in the Hall of Fame if they qualify. But musicians ideally never stop working. Mm -hmm. And sometimes musicians, you know, achieve some of their greatest work very late in their careers, like Johnny Cash. Mm -hmm. um, so that the whole idea of like trying to take the measure of a musician in the midst of their career uh, at, at, in order to decide, you know, how they rate it just seemed ridiculous to me. That's a sports thing. You know, exactly. it's not a it's not a musician thing. Uh there already the, there was already the, the Grammys, you know, to recognize the work that you did contemporaneously. Um, so it just seemed pointless to me. And then the other thing was, I knew they would pretty quickly run out of really qualified <laughs> candidates. You yes. know, uh, you know, my metaphor at the time was, you know, eventually they're going to have to induct Billy Idol and then the jig will be up. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or Devo get nominated. Well, you know, it came before that or they inducted Madonna, you know, yeah. <laughs> the jig uh, was up when that happened. You Paul know? Butterfield blues band inducted in 2015. Yeah. So I knew I had some. Oh, excellent. It hasn't been that long ago. And no, by the way, yeah. you know who would absolutely all know this by now, you know, who would agree with you about who's rock and roll and who isn't Dolly, Dolly Parton. Parton, which will be the yeah, answer to any genius well, question. <laughs> Any <laughs> self-imposed question. Yeah, yeah. She was so honest about it. You know, I really admire her for, you know, for any number of reasons. But the fact that she was honest, honest enough to say, I never, ever tried to make a rock and roll record. What are you talking about? Un until you know? now to prove that she should be there because she didn't want to be there anyway. Well, I long... know. But now she's doing an album of covers. <laughs> right. now, what is the point of that? As long you know? as we're dishing the dirt, you release a song called Rock and Roll Pussy aimed at John Lennon. No, it was not. Oh. Well, it, it, I guess it. I guess it was in in a way because there. You know, it's very easy when you're a rock star, you know, to um, to glamorize yourself and your life and 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 take advantage of the kind of awe that people may have uh, over you and convey the idea that you're a better person than you actually are. And so I was kind of. <clears throat> I was sort of miffed at the fact that, you know, you bite off, sometimes you bite off more than you can chew from a moral standpoint. 
And once you've done that, you know, you set the bar higher for yourself. And unless you meet that bar, you sound like a hypocrite and it takes all the wind out of the message that you're trying to convey. So it was in some ways, I guess, inspired by John Lennon's uh, Wild Years, um, which resulted in a whole new musical express fake feud that went on for a couple of weeks. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where if you set the bar at a certain point, you have to be able to live up to it or else you destroy the whole idea of of what you're trying to convey. Well, I'm with you on John Lennon. I OK, a couple things. It's it is um, sacrilegious to explain that you think he was sort of a douchebag in real life, but also. The songs like George Harrison's solo shit was just so fucking much better in my mind. I, I like George Harrison's stuff better. And like, imagine it's it's great. But again, like there's no borders and there's no religion and there's no war and all that kind of stuff. And I know a lot of dumb people use it as an anthem sure. for like, well, look what he said. He said to do. Yeah. Look, talk. OK, I'm. I say no child should ever go to bed hungry. Everyone should have world-class education. There should never be another war. Where's my fucking statue? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to go bang some, some chicks outside of my relationship. Uh, well, then nowadays they call it virtue signaling. Yes. Indeed. He may have been a pioneer oh, yeah. in that. <laughs> Trailblazer. <Yeah. laughs> I, uh, I'm i with you on him. Yeah, you align, you align yourself with goodness so people think you're good, you know. Well, speak uh, now. So he had a kid that he didn't really do a lot of raising Sean on or Julian. No, no, uh, Julian. Uh, Todd uh, conversely raised a kid that wasn't his. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so if we want to talk morals here, uh, Liv Tyler famously was, uh, uh, I, I got a lot of the story, but you you probably know more of the, the so. story <laughs> than, than I do. So why probably. don't you Perhaps. Walk, walk us through that? I find it fascinating. And it makes you look like a good guy. Uh, yeah, it only makes me look like a good guy. <laughs> virtue signaling. Yeah. Um, um, well, I had a relationship with this with this uh, woman, and the relationship was uh, kind of in its la on its last legs, and she was uh, traveling around with Aerosmith in in Europe. And then called me and said, "I'm." She said, "I'm pregnant." It's definitely not Stevens. <laughs> you know? And I knew right away it was, you know, probably Stevens. And uh, and he would not cop to it. Mm. And I had a whole thing like I had not had any children yet, but I had a whole thing growing up. I didn't get along with my dad. You know, I, he was not. He didn't have a dad himself, so he was not especially qualified. You know, he didn't have an, an example to follow. And and his favorite um, TV personality was Jackie Gleason on The Honeymooners, <laughs> a childless couple. And right. so, you know, when he had children, ultimately four of them, you know, he really was kind of clueless about what he was supposed to do. And... I always felt like unappreciated and unloved in my uh, in my formative years, and I made a personal resolution that I that I was going to have kids one day, and I was going to make sure that my kids knew that I had every intention of having them, and that I was fully committed to them, and that if they ever needed anything from me, they would get it. And um, fast forward again, there is this um, little girl. And technically, nobody wants to be her father. And I thought, that's just a horrible thing to do to a kid. And so I said, I will, I will be her father as long as you, the mother, never, uh, uh, never reveal who the real father is, whoever that might be. Whether it's me or somebody else, you know, that this is the this is the final deal. You know, I will be her father. And that was all great until she got to be about 13 years old. And um, during most of that time, she had been living with uh, relatives in Maine in a normal family. And one of the reasons why she's such a nice person is she grew up in a nice family. 
uh, without her mother and without any of that rock and roll crap around her and stuff like that. Uh, and then when she was 13, we thought she should probably come live with us. And that's when <laughs> her mother decided, okay, the jig is up now. We're going to, we're going to uh, finger Steven Tyler. We're going to get a bunch of money out of him. And that essentially was that. And I didn't speak to live for about five years after that. Wow. And then saying? we had a, when we had a reunion and now I'm one of her fathers. <laughs> so she was born in, was it 70, oh, nine, seven? I'm trying to think of what in the, that uh, was. Uh, about 1977. 77. So. Yeah, 77. She's 45. And so you would send, you put her through school and that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, I can't tell you how many retainers I bought. <laughs> oh, yeah, they sit on those things. But yeah. she's got a beautiful smile. Um, so were you with her biological mother at the time she turned 13? No. No, you were with somebody else. No, actually, soon discovered after that, you know, I made an attempt, you know, let's try and do like the family thing that lasted about two weeks. Right. Uh, <laughs> I said, I just can't do this anymore. And when that ended, that's when Liv went to live with other relatives, you know, in a up in Maine with just like a lovely, quiet family. Uh, and BB went off and, and continued her shenanigans wherever that was. Did, One, uh, yeah. So uh, she was sort of became a groupie then at that point. And then Liv, broke uh, she a, didn't become she didn't become one uh, she was a group <laughs> you know, um, she was in a, she was in a sense born one you know and that was my it was my mistake you know my jesus complex that got me that deep into it but um uh i don't really usually i usually don't talk about this at all um but uh you caught me well, we appreciate it. Caught me with my pants down. Well, I listen. I appreciate your candor, Todd. And I, I, you know, I never know what to bring up with people because some stuff falls under the heading of sensitive. Right. But then there's a lot of people like talking about sort of real mm -hmm. moments in their in their life, and I think it's been a bit of a trend. You know, several years ago, you didn't talk about such things. Now we've kind of learned that the more you talk about them, the more other people who feel like they're the only person in the world who comes from a broken family or is gay or whatever it is. Now they feel like not such an outlier anymore. But um, and it also, you know, from what I was reading about it, you do seem like the the sane person in this equation, or at least the one who was doing the right thing. So it's not like we're talking about the time you were muling drugs in from Mexico in the late sixties or something. We won't get into that. Oh, now. geez. Don't get me started. Uh, this um, is, uh, this is you coming across as a, as a Euro. decent, uh, uh, un John Lennon ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Like the most important thing to, to me in this world to this day is, is my children. It was a thing that I was, you know, whatever else I do in life, this is the one thing I want to get right. And, um, and it's just unfortunate that the world has gone to a place where people don't think that as much anymore. Well, uh, listen, but I'm I'm with you. I I had a, a dad that uh, yeah, he wasn't so much Ralph Cramden, but uh, <laughs> he he was not a great father. And so I then committed to just do the opposite of whatever he would do. And that's what I did with my kids. And it bothers me that so many people go, oh, you know, his dad wasn't great. So he doesn't know what he's doing. And my feeling is, is, you know, firsthand how painful that is. And then even though it might not be who you are, uh, kids don't know it when you're faking it. Mm. Like if you go, hey. Uh, that picture you drew is the greatest thing ever. I'm going to put it up on the refrigerator or I'm going to go to your Little League game and cheer the loudest. Um, or uh, let's go to dinner tonight, even yeah. though I wish I was going with one of my drinking buddies. But <laughs> Feel free to fake it. They, they really don't know. And if you are faking being a good parent and a good dad, uh, well, if you can fake it for a long time, uh, I think the kid's going to have a pretty good experience. 
Um, it's not the kind of thing really that you have to fake. You know, it's like um, there's plenty of room for you within, you know, family and fatherhood or motherhood or whatever. There's still plenty of room for you to be selfish. You know, you yeah. don't have to feel like you're being deprived of anything just because you make sacrifices for your kids. You know, it's uh, even if that sacrifice is to make a commitment to another person, you know, it, for the sake of the kids. A lot of people say, oh, you know, it's like, why, you know, it's worse for the kids to watch us fighting all the time than it is for us to get divorced. Mm -hmm. And that just means you're not willing to sacrifice your behavior for the sake of your kids. You know, it's, um, for me, it was, it's, you know, that's the primary reason why I ever got married when I was 50. Because up until that point, I thought, unless you find someone who makes the same kind of commitment to child rearing that, that you have, well, you don't have children with them, you know, and if they do have that same commitment, well, then you might as well eventually marry them, you know, and I got married after I had all my kids, but was, was it I was, I was assured at that point, you know, that I was not doing it alone. Was it uh, kind of mind numbing when Liv became this huge star shortly thereafter? I mean, she hit pretty big, pretty pretty young yeah she was in her dad's videos she was in the uh that thing you do she had a great role oh in that. she was great in that thing you do Faye. and let's not forget armageddon oh, man one of the best films ever yeah. created <laughs> <laughs> i mean that had to be a little surreal or you know or you know it it's a little it was a little harsh watching her in like uh in an aerosmith video mm. It was yes. just a little harsh realizing that, gee, Stephen didn't do any of the work. Mm. <laughs> he did none of the work for this, you know, and now here he is showing her off. And uh, and yeah, I never I never got to do or my family never got to do the, you know, what is usually the most challenging, but also the most rewarding part of raising children, which is releasing them from the nest you know, which is, you know, getting them somehow through their schooling. And we all know how horrible that, that is for the entire family, <laughs> you know, but, you know, getting them finally through their schooling and up on their own feet, you know, and out in their first job and, 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 and dealing with all of their transitional issues and things like that. It's, it's the rewarding part, you know, here's the thing that you've worked on for so long, and now you're going to see how it works in, in the world. Uh, kind of just like making a record, I guess, yeah. you know, or making a movie or something like that. You know, it's all very insular until you release it. And, you know, in the, in the same way that people say, you know, you don't. If you're in politics, you don't talk about people's children, you know, but once they're <laughs> once they're Donald Jr., you can talk about them all you want, you know, and, and I'm wondering what's happening with Barron yeah. myself. I think he's, after all, about he's about like he's on the brink of adulthood and he can say anything he wants at this point. And he's like a black box, you know, who knows what where the, he is or what he is or what's going to happen we'll when he decides to finally open his mouth. Yeah, he he may turn. Hmm. I have if anyone could turn. He could turn. Well, he's of a different generation as well. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody that he's gone to school with, you know, has a whole different attitude about uh, unless they've taken some special care to make sure that he goes to a school full of other pricks. Um, <laughs> he's probably, you know, going to realize something eventually, you know. Uh, I mean, I, you wonder this about everybody's children, you know, how, what about Marjorie Taylor Greene likes to brag about her children and they're probably mom shut up. Yeah, well, well anyone, like um, I don't want anyone to know. Like Kellyanne Conway's <laughs> Kelly daughter. Conway. I listen, I, I think, well, nowadays that people are so fluid sexually, 
I think uh, I think you can go gay or lesbian mm-hmm. if you've got a dad you're pissed off at pretty pretty damn easily. You uh, can just decide to do that. Yeah. This is yeah. why you this do not force things down your kids' throats. They will bite you in the ass at some point if you constantly try to take that square peg and put yeah. it into that round hole like I played football and you're playing football too if you start getting into that <laughs> they'll to you. They're, they'll bite you with their sexuality at some point <laughs> <laughs> me it was just the opposite I never played baseball but you're playing baseball right <laughs> and you yeah. know my oldest my oldest son was a baseball prodigy and played pro for 11 years and I was mm-hmm. never into baseball I had to learn was that Randy? I had to learn what the stupid game was about you know, after he became, you know, drafted out of high school and things like that. So it's um, that, wow. was, that yeah. was Randy, that, right? Because that was not a direction are... I ever expected to, to take <laughs> to ever have to go in, you know, learning about baseball. Wow. <laughs> and but it, it also, you know, it's genuine because you never pushed it. Right. And you never tried to float it. He went to it. It could be music, could be baseball. But it's mm-hmm. like, it feels weird trying to fool your kids into liking shit that you want them to like or that you like <laughs> Fools as in. well. I mean, I get it. Listen, um, I told you, I don't want to offend Todd, but, you know, my son told me the other day he hated soccer and he didn't get the band U2 and I was proud of him. <laughs> I was proud. I was like, <laughs> but yeah. I... But but if you would have loved the band U2, Bono and Co., and if you would have loved the World Cup, I would still love you. Yeah, not not as much, but I would I would love <laughs> yes, you. Yeah. Todd, uh, let me give the uh, record a plug. Space Force, available wherever you listen to finer music. It's available as we speak. Live dates coming up. Todd-Rundren. Um, R-U-N-D-G-R-E-N.com. Boy, Todd, I feel like we have more to talk about. So maybe you'll come back whenever you have some time and chat with us again. Sure thing. I should have plenty of time uh, for the next couple of months. I'm, I toured, like I said, I toured about 10 months out of this year, making up for all of the tours that have been delayed because of the pandemic and things like that. So I'm pretty caught up now and I'm going to. Um, I'm not going to abuse myself so much next year. Well, we can come to you if it's easy. Yeah, if you've got a sure thing. Come, <laughs> come got a guest down. cottage. <laughs> Todd Rundgren, <laughs> thank you so much, Todd. Thank you, guys. That's an interesting guy. Wow. Next, That's Evo Naturals. Yeah, I've known about Todd Rundgren my entire adult life, but I've never interviewed him or heard him interviewed no, or no. talked to him or i didn't know i didn't even know what he was going to look like i just known of his music yeah. and i don't think i've ever crossed paths with him anyway he didn't disappoint He's a very interesting guy next evo naturals well a lot of people stressed out around the holidays give yourself the ultimate gift of stress-free holidays with Next Evo Naturals, fast absorbing CBD products. Next Evo Stress CBD Complex Gummies, clinically proven to have four times better absorption than standard CBD, featuring Ashwagan. Ashwagan. <laughs> Ash- <laughs> Wait a minute. My screw, there's more to this. Sorry. Clip this. Ashwagan. Oh, sorry. Featuring ashwagandha, clinically proven to reduce stress by 70%. This stuff is so good if especially you want to just mellow out and relax during these crazy trying times. SmartSorb technology gets CBD into your system in as little as 10 minutes. Scientifically proven. 30 times better absorption in the first 30 minutes. It is Next Evo Naturals, right, Dawson? Get smarter CBD from Newton. Get smarter CBD from Next Evo Naturals and get up to 25% off subscription orders of $40 or more at nextevo.com slash podcast. Promo code Adam. That's N-E-X-T-E-V-O dot com slash podcast. Promo code Adam. All right, quick break. Back to the news right after this. Well, since we talked about Elon Musk earlier, let's talk about him again. He and Dave Chappelle have a very budding friendship. And uh, that doesn't totally surprise me. Um, He, however, was treated to a wall of booze 
as in booing, when Dave Chappelle brought the new Twitter CEO on stage at the end of his San Francisco show recently, and Elon wore a shirt that says, I love Twitter. Uh, the comedian was performing Sunday at the Chase Center, and toward the end of the set, uh, he brought up Elon, and the crowd did not seem super happy about it. There's a clip that's like three minutes long. Here's just a 30-second clip of Chappelle trying to get the comedy going again during the booing, since I believe this wrapped up the show. Smoking. Yeah. Ooh. That guy stops doing that eventually. <laughs> you see? We're saying Moo Musk. Oh, yeah. right. mm-hmm. Boo Earns. This nigga is not even trying to die on Earth. His whole business model is fuck Earth. I'm leaving anyway. So it just starts to get into the jokes a little bit, but the crowd never fully gets on their side. I love Elon Musk. I love what he, I, lo, I love, I don't know why I like anyone that gets up. I love anyone when someone goes, you're dangerous. They go, fuck you. <laughs> like, I, lo, you I, I love that person. Yeah, that's him. I, uh, and also, I don't know, I, I don't know. I know all the claims, but I don't know what he's doing that is so inherently dangerous other than outing the left for controlling Twitter. That's all he's that's all he's doing. Why is everything so dangerous? It's dangerous in that you disagree with it because he's outing you, but he's not doing anything inherently right. dangerous. The, it, and we talked about this not long ago, but I thought, I mean, we were all all in on Elon Musk. He's like this young, bright, like upstarter, amazing. And the first time at least for me, and I believe most people were like, you wait, Elon, Elon Musk, Elon Musk said that? Was when he called the guy in uh, Thailand trying to save the kids a pedophile. Like, oh, wait, yeah. that's the guy? This guy, he's a hero. He's that trying character. To, at, yes. That was the first time we were like, whoa, whoa, this, it, he must be a pedophile. Because Elon, Elon would never say that. It was Elon to the rescue. He was right. going to make a he, There was that the submersible. Submersible. Yeah, that yeah. capsule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's talk Golden Globes because those have just been announced. The nominations are they, are they happening? Well, because they didn't happen last year or two, right? Yes, but okay. as my dad would always say, "Yes with an and, and no with a but." Uh, they're happening. We'll see who attends. We'll get into that. Um, a year after uh, most of Hollywood boycotted the ceremony and F- Hollywood Foreign Press Association over that racial scandal, they're going to do it. It's the 80th annual Globes, hosted by Gerard. I wouldn't say it's annual. <laughs> Gerard <laughs> Carmichael uh, will return to NBC and Peacock on January 10th. Although it's unclear how many Hollywood's stars will attend, Tom Cruise, who was nominated for Top Gun Maverick, and Brendan Fraser for The Whale are nominated and already said they will not go. Oh. Um, well, f- Brendan Fraser's got the thing with the Golden Globes yeah. guy. With the for- the former president. Dropped a taint pinky on That's him. That's right. So he has a reason. From behind. <laughs> I feel like I, a Tom Cruise just runs a perpetual popularity contest. Yeah. We'll say nothing. We'll just lick his finger and go, what, which way is which, the wind which, blowing? Which way is the wind blowing? Because I'm going that way. Interesting, yeah. I, I don't know that he... Has strong thoughts other than whatever the whatever anyone's saying. I'm doing it. I think you're 100 right about Tom Cruise. That's it. Tom Cruise, the businessman, I would yeah. think would show up to this. I thought the same thing. Another five million eyeballs on uh, Top Gun Maverick. Well, now there's two parts of business. There's the part of business where you're doing business, like. How much does it cost Major League Baseball to move the All Star Game from mm-hmm. Atlanta to Denver? Right. Well, it costs money, but that's good for business right. if you're Long trying term. to bullshit people yeah. into thinking you're progressive. So, yeah, okay. There's like a, another yeah. business side. Yeah, and you know who else is really good at at licking their finger and seeing which way the wind blows in a business sense when it comes to marrying business and entertainment? Dolly Parton. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> yeah, Cruz returned his trophies last year. Yeah, oh, mm-hmm. that's right. I forgot about yeah. that story. So let's talk about a couple of the nominees just to get them out there for best motion did, picture. Did Chris? Did you find that somebody tweeted me over the weekend? Did you see the New York Times top ten films of the year? And I said no, but I'm <laughs> I'm already angry. Like I I just knew whatever it was would anger me. Didn't even open it. There's no there's no way. That uh, Maverick made it onto no. the not a, onto great. the list. No, right, great film. The best, most I've seen it three, best, four times. The best reason to go to a movie yes. theater in the last you five are, years. You saved the movie theater industry. Right. And there's yeah. no way they cracked the 10 yeah. that uh, New York Times. But 
I don't know. But see, here's the whole thing about the New York Times and a lot of these places. Well, don't be so predictable. Yeah. This is a throw something on there that's mainstream yeah. or something. You know what I mean? Mystery. Maybe put it number seven. I mean, they did. Their number one movie was Nope. But the rest of them, I talked to Anderson about this last night. But, it's like, no, but Nope's in. It's okay. Well, no. I'm saying it's mainstream. I'm not arguing for the quality. Oh, no. I'm no. saying, but it, wait, what was Nope? Was the that, Jordan Peele movie? Oh, yeah. But that's black main, you know, no. that's, 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 in, that's consistent with what they do. What they do. Sure thing. Uh, I was talking to Anderson about it last night, my co-host in the film vault, and he, uh, as his film knowledge often exceeds mine, we each knew two of the films. What? On the list. Two! That's part of what they now, do, I too. I suspect a lot were foreign films, uh, but I, I don't That's know. That's what they do, too. You. Well, Brian, I'm glad you said that, because I'm going to need your help with a few of these. Okay, let's hear it. Um, so, the dramas that are nominated, Elvis, which we've all heard of and seen. The Fable Men's, which is it out yet? I saw it, yes. Oh, you did? And is it a... Heard it's good. Is it's good. it basically about Spielberg's family? Yeah, de facto. I mean, it's okay. a fictional story, but I think there's a lot of auto- autobiographical Got stuff it. in there. Got um, it. Tar, Tar, with an accent over the A. Anderson told me it's really good. That's Cain Blanchett and a two and a half hour movie about uh, being a, uh, a, maestro, a maestro, a maestro, a conductor. Okay. Mm. Uh, Top Gun Maverick and Avatar The Way of Water, which is that not? Uh, no, it comes out this weekend. Okay. Oh, let's look at the All New York right, Times. So, New film. York Times says nope. Now, nope was fine. Is it, did you see it? I, was like, yeah. I saw it. It was, it was okay. It was it's all right. I mean, um, it's clear what you're doing. You're just doing affirmative action here. Otherwise, you couldn't arrive with Nope as the, the number one best film. Tar is number six. I have not heard of eight of these films. And yeah. I am by no means a film critic or even close to it. I like to keep up on yeah, things. I like sure. to see I movies. You. I, don't, I don't know what yeah, these are. This is the New York Times best film list of just this year, right? Yes, correct. Nope, Neptune Frost, Mr. Bachman and His Class, After Sun, No Bears, Tar, Lost Illusions, Flux Gourmet, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, and Down with the King. If you look at the directors in parentheses, there's a lot of names that maybe you don't hear, you know, every day in this country. So I'm thinking they might be foreign films. Makes sense. Yeah, that sounds like them. Where no. was Nope? Now, Nope. Nope is okay. Probably do, it's okay, but this is the number one yeah. on According the, to the list. New York Times. No, they don't hey, think Scott. they don't think it's the best. It's all affirmative action now. Crazy. They do not think it's the best film of the year. But the people, that one, the critics will have it higher than the people, probably. I wonder where it is with the people on. Is it? Nope I, is you on know, a, I have no idea. In the meantime, you guys should see uh, The Menu and Glass Onion, both very fun. Yeah, waiting for Glass Onion. Oh, wow. So wow, the, who the, could have predicted this? Yeah, the <laughs> critics have Nope at 82%, the people at 69 Right. And I think that's about right. Yeah, sixty nine is about right. Well, well, not according to the Times. Okay. I would say it's objectively a good movie, yeah. not a great one. Benny Stretch Imagination. This is number one. Yeah. Okay. I'm saying that's well, you don't have to listen to the Times right. anymore because they're factoring in other factors. Right. That's like I got fucking burned last night. Me and Sonny saw a fair to Midland movie yeah. that was at ninety three on Rotten Tomatoes because they're factoring in other shit. Right. Not what you want. I don't know if you have it in front of you. Do you have the best picture of comedy or musical? Yes, right here. Uh, Babylon. Oh, oh, that's the new. Uh, didn't see it. That's the new Damien Chazelle, the Whiplash guy. That's his new Got movie it. comes out a few. Is weeks. that the Brad Pitt one? Yes, or is that another Margot one? Robbie. Oh, okay, we'll oh, want to see I that. Uh, did you see the Banshees of Inisherin? I did. It's good. Well, oh, boy, that's a tough recommend. That's a really good movie, but it is slow and quiet and Irish. Long. Yeah, Black and in white. Ireland in 1912 or something. It's no, no, sorry, 1923. Point is, it's 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 for a certain flavor. Got it. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I love that movie. Good. Glass. It wouldn't end for me, but it was good. <laughs> I think that was kind of the point. Uh, Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery, and something that was just recommended to me last night, and I don't think it's out yet. I don't know. You can tell me. Triangle of Sadness. No, that, I saw it in theater. It's you been did out for a few weeks. Okay. Mm. That is another one that's a tough recommend, but uh, you know, it's a button pushing movie. You're going to be uncomfortable. Comfortable, but it's good. There's no good name for G's V. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is, um, well done. Is that a Mike White movie? Because no. the reason why it was brought up to me is because, of course, the Mike, the Mike, the White Lotus finale was huge and it was so fulfilling in so many ways. And then the first thing somebody asked me was, "Well, you got to see Triangle of Sadness." I didn't know what the connection. I'm was. drawing a blank okay. on that director's name, but he's made good. Ruben Ostlund. Wow, oh, wow, that was a deep, that was a deep pull. pull. Wow. 
Nice. Yeah. Um, and then we'll just do a TV series, for a drama, Better Call Saul, The Crown, House of the Dragon, and Severance. And best TV mu- musical or comedy, Abbott Elementary, The Bear, Hacks, Only Murders in the Building, and Wednesday. So is Abbott Elementary the only network? And that I don't know what The Bear mix. is. The Bear's on Hulu. Okay. Yeah, it's really good. Joel McHale's in it. Oh, he is? Yeah, it's a little bit, but... He plays the titular bear. <laughs> <laughs> well, he played... He, he acted with a bear in uh, Mark Wahlberg, Seth MacFarlane. Oh, yeah, Ted. Teddy. Teddy. Yeah, Teddy. That's right. He was great in that. Well done. Right. Well, well done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You know, we do a lot of... This is the time of year where there's a lot of, like, this of the year, that of the year, the year look back, the year in review. This is not an honor... I have seen bestowed on anyone before, and I have now been doing this for like eight years. So let's do this one. We have an anti-Semite of the year. Oh. Oh. I didn't know this was a yearly competition. (laughs) Yeah, a couple of sleepers that Uh, were interesting. Yeah, I have the ones who didn't get the honor. Uh, So Kanye West has been named the anti-Semite of the year by a watchdog group. Um, it'd be weird if he it'd be awkward if he didn't it's get actually it. funny I, Ben I don't know if you're pulling this from the actual website but they I, I didn't think to tell you this but they do do a funny like video like Mazel Tov and like there's confetti and it's like they're doing like an Oscar man of the year but we can we can look at that in a minute um, Leora Rez she's the executive director of Stop Anti-Semitism told TMZ Conway uses his uh, Kanye uses his celebrity platform to push dangerous anti-Semitic tropes about Jews and power and he refuses to stop his continuous onslaught of bigoted statements has redu- resulted in horrific anti-Semitic acts perpetrated by white supremacists black Hebrew Israelites and other fringe groups looking to cause Jews harm this is part of the video um, it's it's done in a very celebratory way. Here we go. Congratulations to Kanye West, disgraced rapper, fashion mogul for being voted 2022 anti-Semite of the year. Kanye West's threats of violence, hateful conduct, and hate speech all led to him winning this year. So the you music can sell. brings it home. It's pretty yeah. funny with the B-roll. But who so placed and showed? So here's who did. Let's talk about the people he beat out for the honor. Uh, go ahead and just Scroll there. Um, Mohammed Hadid. The oh, Hadid name must sound familiar. Yeah, the Got twins. The, the hot, well, I think they're sisters, but whatever. Gigi and Bella, the oh, models. Oh, sorry. I mean, young model yeah. sisters. Yeah, let's talk yeah. about them. Uh, they call him a failed real estate developer, though I I think he's probably done pretty well for himself, has morphed into a fanatic Jew hater that spreads his false anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. You know, I want to say this about everyone who talks shit about somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, when they kind of go washed up yeah. something yeah. or failed, the guy's got seven acres in Malibu. I think he landed on his house feet. is fifty five million dollars. Yeah. You're allowed I, to acknowledge why we know them. They're, right. They, they've had a successful why they're baseball career. Or if you don't want to heap any praise, you can just go real estate yeah, developer. developer. <laughs> or the ones great, you know what I yes. mean? Like acknowledge that we know them for a reason. Yeah. So Yes, yes. I, there's a reason. Uh, he recently navigated from Israel bashing to promoting Nazi like conspiracy theories of Jewish power when he openly stated Israel and the Jews control the media well that's true he was mm. right he was uh he was runner up but this guy maybe hasn't been on the tip of your tongue let's give him his due can i say this yeah. you can get away with this shit if you have two smoking hot daughters and a hot son i think he's a model too on water. guys are always going to want to fuck you yeah the, the the son could take it in the nutsack on oh. this one you can slow a kid's roll right oh. but the girls there's always going to be lines. somebody be yeah who's, yes well, let's turn our attention to John Minadeo II. If I'm saying that right, please excuse me, John, if I'm not. Leader of the white supremacist group Goyam Defense League is oh. responsible for the <laughs> L.A. banner. Let me make the rules. i got to make the rules for this list. Okay. You got a rap mogul, then you got a real estate mogul. Your job can't be starting a hate group yeah this guy mm-hmm. lives in an apartment yeah that, that that's, a good it, point. that's who Very you are point. yeah i need you to be a race car driver nice. or Mel rapper who yes, happens. something who then disgrace I themselves totally agree you start the jewish hate group your freshman year of <laughs> high school that's kind of your gig yeah, that's yeah. What you do. no i think you're absolutely right but he was the one that dropped the banner that red kanye was right about the jews uh he directs his followers to drop thousands of flyers across america blaming everything 
on the Jews from 9-11 to COVID to the war in Ukraine. I have been, I don't know if it's his specifically, but I have been the recipient of these baggies that have like rocks in them to weigh them down so they don't fly away to somebody else's house. Mm. And uh, they are, they are artistic. A lot of propaganda photos. How is it easy? That's my gift for everyone for (laughs) Christmas. A lot of clip art. What are the chances you're going to find a Jew in your neighborhood? there was a pre-installed mezuzah on my door. Oh, well, oh that's boy. on you. Oh, pre-installed before we moved in. Came with the jam. It did. Mm-hmm. And, and they're in all the doorways in the house. I didn't put them Is there. Is that the little bar thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see in the hospital. Oh, they probably times. picked it up at the Home Depot. Boy. <laughs> That was good. Well done. That was really Thank good. You. Um, let's move on. Let's talk about, you love new technology. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves Dyson. God bless a company for making vacuums and fans sexy. Like, that's mm-hmm. a sexy item now. The yeah. hair dryers are like $800. It's amazing. We have one, and it's fucking awesome. Of course. You, well, the, the hair dryer? One, no, stick with the oh, stick. Okay. Uh, the yeah. Vacuum. yeah. I saw fancy. Yeah. I like the bladeless fan. They were the, yeah. they, that was them. Uh, but they're they're moving on. They're moving on to headphones, but they're not just any headphones. They're over-the-ear headphones with a very Bane-like mouthpiece oh that's mm. an air purifier. Mm. I, I thought, she's in Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. It's about a thousand bucks. Uh, the makers look like, it looks like Bane from Batman. I don't know how else you'd describe it. It's this thing that goes over the mouth and nose. They're also supposed to be noise canceling. Will supposedly filter out 99% of particles, including city fumes and pollutants. I think we'll probably see people on, on planes. planes. Yeah. This is going to be the new world order. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. And then there's going to be some stories where the thing saved their life because a crazy homeless guy punched them. <laughs> but thank God they were wearing right. their face guard. Yep, yep. I like it when companies just keep going. Mm-hmm. Like they start off with a vacuum and then you go, all right, well, how many vacuums can you do? No, the, the, I'll, I'll tell you, the two that'll give themselves a real run for their money is WeatherTech and the My Pillow guy. Okay. The My Pillow guy is right in the title. Yeah. He's we know what he was going to sell you his pillow. Yes. And you go, oh, that's fine. But how many pillows can you sell? Because uh, I got a pillow that'll last me 15 years. Right. You know, Fucker, like, oh, no. Now he's got slippers and yeah. he's got bathrobes and he's got towels got and he's to. got sheets. Makes he's Steve got, Jobs look like a lazy asshole. The weather tech guys are going equally yep, as bananas. Yep, yep. The weather tech is like, how many fucking floor mats can you mm-hmm. sell for Ford F 150 trucks? Oh, they got dog bowls, oh, yeah. they got cups, they mm-hmm. got travel mugs, they got phone Welcome holders. Mats. You can, they make a product to cover every single <laughs> square inch of your vehicle. There's a, like a cap for the tow hitch, you know, wow. there's a bumper guard. There's a liner for the cup holder. There's trash cans. They must sit around every day and just think of what can we <laughs> cover make, in silicone. Can, yeah, is it extruded plastic, vinyl, whatever they cover. They had floor mats for 20 years, and now they have 7,000 possibilities. It's impressive. It yes. is. They think if you, they probably lock themselves in the car for 24 hours and think, what do we need? They have seat covers. They, Purse holder. Phone holders. It, it just, it, it will not end. And, and the my pillow guy and the weather tech mm. guys are fucking in a battle royale <laughs> for it out. what's more shit I can invent. Yeah. All Good right. for them. Let's bring it home. Oh. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Well, Tucson Rialto Theater's coming up uh, this Thursday. Maybe a couple of tickets left for that. Nice theater in Tucson. And then we're all heading out this Friday and mm-hmm. Saturday. Four shows, two, uh, you know, two pods and two stand-up shows. That'll be at the uh, Tempe Improv. Go to ampcurl.com for all the live shows, and you can see us all uh, with John Popper doing shows in Dallas. And you can also just buy tickets for the uh, for the for the show if you want to just come out to the show. You go to adamcurl.com for all the live stuff, and we'll be everywhere. Space Force, Todd Rundgren. What a delight! Available wherever you listen to music. And you can go to ToddRundgren.com for live dates. Till next time, Santa Cruz for Todd Rundgren, Gina Grad, and Ball Brian. Say it. Mahalo. <laughs> <laughs>